Roll the dice. Hi, welcome back to Guff Stuff Weekly Podcast. I'm Javen. And I am Cantankerous Guff. That is more or less accurate. Yep. Well, not really today so much. No, nah, you've, pre- you've been pretty good today. Maybe maybe tomorrow. Maybe, maybe I'll let you out of the out of the store today. You'll let me out of the store today? Good. That's nice. I'll let you into public. Go home and hang out with my fam. Yeah. Anyways, today we're going to talk about something that I've been playing a lot lately, uh, and that's uh, Warhammer 40k. Yeah, 40k is a good universe. Oh, it's a dark universe. Yeah, yeah, grim dark. Far it's pretty huge, though. It's been around for... Uh, it hasn't been around as long as D&D, but pretty close. Sad news is I think the, the, the grandfather of 40k just died not that long ago. Oh, like the writer? Like the guy who basically created it back in the okay. day. Okay. I just caught a news article. The Gary Gygax of 40k. Yeah, essentially. Um, region, original, 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 original. So, what, what, uh, what, what is 40k? Well, it's a lot. It's a lot. I agree. It, I, if you're gonna boil it down to like, a for sim- me, a if, if, if I was just gonna sum it up, coming in last about 40k, I would assume they were talking about the mini war game. Okay, the tabletop, the tabletop war, the game. war game. Yeah. yeah, that that's what I would assume. That's where, that's where my default jumps to as well, but for a lot there's, of people, that's not true. No, there's a there's a tip. It was a RPG. It was an RPG. It was an RTS. Yeah, it was a CRPG. It's, it's it video was games. It's all kinds of action shooter. Yeah. It's been all sorts of different things. Yeah. So yeah, there's but yeah, if I was gonna talk, because generally when I'm talking to somebody that comes into the store, they're like, "Hey, you got any 40k stuff?" They're not looking for the. Generally, they're not looking for the RPG. Now, I do have a couple customers that do, but generally they're looking for models to paint and. All that stuff because that's kind of where they're making their name lately the last say decade or so i mean they do have their but when you have fantasy flight printing games for you and then they quit printing games yeah <laughs> which is often as they do I, I love the company they just quit doing everything and it sucks and then it kind of sucks but yeah 80 1987 40k came out yeah because it would have been rogue trader and for that yeah. is what came out yeah so workshop, yeah. Well, so, quick explanation: What is 40k? Like, what's what's the universe? What's it about? Well, that maybe maybe we should be asking you that. What is the 40k universe about? Okay. Well, again, I I think 40k in the scope of the tabletop yep. is what most people. I would say the majority of people who are going to talk about 40k. This might not be so true anymore because right. of all the video games that have come out. Yeah, there's a lot of video games in 40k now. Um, but 40k is basically a it it's 37,000 years into the future. Yeah. Um, you have all these... Hence the 40K. Just exactly, yeah. It's, it's the 41st really millennium, yeah. Way out there. We'll that, never see it. It might be in the 42nd now. I can't remember. Yeah, in the actual no floor. Anyways, long story short, uh, it's a, a grand, epic um, sci-fi setting. Yeah. Uh, it is a science fiction setting with... Um, elements of like humans and then they have the things called the xenos which are different like alien races right and they also have something called chaos and that's basically like demons from the warp which is their equivalent of faster than light travel right as you go you travel through the warp now 40k gets really intense really quickly with how a complicated it is right b how dark it is yeah and c just the amount of characters and names you need to know to really feel like you're getting anywhere. Yeah, it it is it, it can be very overwhelming. Hence it's probably it's probably the main reason I haven't got into it so deep. Just because there's so much to it. Like I'll play the video games and I'll even play the tabletop a little bit, but Man, you get those guys who are really into it, and you don't say the right thing. They get really oh yeah, it, it, it will. They, they already... This isn't D and D where if you say drizz, drizz, drizz it, drizz, yeah, drizz, drizz you say it wrong. Yeah, yeah. Most most bedroom guys are gonna be like, okay, yeah. So everybody says it wrong. Well, and the the thing about forty k specifically, I've seen with the fan base, is the people who like the lore, yeah, are fanatical about the lore. Yeah, yeah, they are very fanatical. They're not. They're, most people the, don't half-ass that. There, there is no chill no. With, when it comes to the lore of 40K. Um, there's a lot of memes and stuff out there that people appreciate and stuff, you know, things like that, jokes that people make about it. That's a, a pretty open thing. But, right. like, if you call Adeptus Mechanicus uh, the Mechanicum, 
you're wrong because the Mechanicum was something completely different. That that was before right. the chaos took. It, it, it's it's just crazy to me, like it, the scope <laughs> of the setting. Yeah, no, it's it's yeah, it's overwhelming. So it, it gets me crazy. There's tons of videos out there explaining Warhammer lore. Oh yeah. Um, war. There's books. There's... Yeah, and none of those videos. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, though. If you go down that rabbit hole. Very few of the good videos are less than a half hour long. Oh, yeah. yeah. Most of them are going to be two, three, four hours long explaining one bit of the universe to you. Um, in fact, I think I think one of my favorite primers to 40K mm -hmm. was um, John Boehner, Total Biscuit. Yep. Um, back years ago, did Warhammer lore in 60 seconds or less. Oh, jeez. And it moves really quick, but it covers the main gist right. of the imperial lore the the human it's enough lore. for most average people to figure out okay this is what's going on yeah so this is this is the but idea this will be really upset with you yeah and don't get the wrong shoulder blade the shoulder pad yeah don't put the wrong shoulder pad and the wrong, 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 wrong gun because they're not allowed to have the plasma bolter yeah these that guys would this. carry plasma guns. Yeah. yeah oh man and don't mistake bolters for las rifles no, or stubbers yeah. for crack launchers like it's just it there's a lot to it and it's a pretty it's a pretty rough time to get into, but I will say it is also one of the most rewarding lores you can get into because if you know anything about the lore <clears throat> and you dive into it, yeah. the conversations you can have with people are oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, because the the fan theories, the speculation, they leave a lot of stuff open ended. It it makes for awesome discussion topics. Right. And you can you can there's a plethora of people on there that basically have just done what if videos in 40k. Yeah. Um, one of one of the most notable ones, uh, memorable ones for the majority of the community, is what if the emperor had a text to speech device? <laughs> the emperor sitting on dead, right? sitting on his throne. What if he had a text to speech device? Oh man! And that's been, that was over ten years ago that came out, and that's still referenced tons today in meme culture and all sorts of different things. And it's just hilarious, and it's a fan made thing. There's also great fan made videos. Oh yeah, they're, they're like cool a, movies, this, man. A star, yeah, like there's there's so it's many things. Head, it, man. It, it's 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 painful. It, it is crazy uh, with how much content and lore and fluff there is. Yeah, yeah. And this is not even talking about the video games yet, or or or, or the Black Library, or the Black Library. We just talked about that. Like they they hire authors. Um, oh, it's so big. My my favorite of the writers is probably Dan Abnett. He's written a lot of good right. stuff. Um, that they hire authors to write 40k novels. Yeah, and, and there's a there, lot of some novels. are thick. Some are very thick. I've I've considered buying some at different times, but then I just know, or even audiobooks. I've considered it, but then you can't. There's no just one book to cover it's, something. It's, it's, it's like, like a whole freaking encyclopedia worth of so, books. So so that's the to nice, cover one subject. That's the nice thing is like if you want. Like just an episodic novel, like right. something you could pick up and read and be like, "Oh, that was a good story." They have plenty of that. Oh yeah, um, oh. but they also have you know stuff that makes the Wheel of Time series look like yeah, look like a an Ernest Hemingway novella. Yeah, like it's just tiny compared. The Wheel of Time is thirteen books, you know. Yeah, it's a lot of books. I don't know how many thousand pages. Some of the books are up over a thousand pages, I think. On those, it's a lot of pages. And, and the Black Library. <laughs> I think there's I think there's over thirty books in the Horus Heresy series. Oh, probably. Like it's it's obscene. Yeah, it's it's crazy. But if you like the lore and you like books yeah. and you like audiobooks, even almost everything's yeah. an audiobook. Yeah. You can find basically a book on anything in 40k. Mm -hmm. And the novels themselves, um, I wouldn't call any of them that I've read maybe a ten out of ten. <laughs> They're not barn it, burners. It's, it's it's none of them are gonna make a bestseller list. Right. But they're good. Like yeah. Gaunt's Ghost, I remember that book. Like it, it stuck with me. Nice. Because it was just it was a very good read. Um the Space Wolf's omnibus. I read most of the Space Wolf's omnibus, the first one. And tons of books in that, but almost all of it's memorable. Like I still remember the names, I remember the characters. Right. And they they do a very good job of bleeding the lore in, but also giving you a good story to read. Right. So the Black Library is a great way. Um, to learn and almost everybody I know has audible credits just sitting around. Yeah, no, I've like, yeah. You can free trial I've Audible. Come, I've come close so many times. I'm not, I'm not plugging Audible here, but you can free trial Audible. But we could. You get two credits. Yeah. 
and then those are always yours. Yep. They just give them to you, and you could basically get two audiobooks with it. Yeah. Oh, it's it's, it's, it's a it's a damn good deal. And then if you don't if you don't like them, you just basically cancel your Audible and you never have to pay for them. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, if you don't, yeah, I'm just. I don't, mean, you're, you're getting you're getting about thirty dollars worth of value for free. Oh yeah. Sometimes pick, more if you get one of the any bigger books book. you want. Yeah. No, I started off with a huge book, and I of course I've been an Audible fan ever since, and I've bought. Of course, not an Audible podcast, but I have bought. They do have sales for you guys who buy the Epics. Like, if you're going to buy the Horace Heresy, that's 30. If you're waiting on Audible, it's going to take you almost three years to buy all those. Yeah. But they do have sales where they give you, like, three or five things for 40 bucks or 30 bucks, which yeah. is less than $10 a book, which, I yeah. mean, try to buy that. Yeah. And I, I've read them in paper. I've read them in audiobooks. Mm-hmm. The audiobook narrators they get have always been fantastic. I haven't had a, a bad experience with an audiobook from them. And the books themselves, like I said, the contents, it's it's a good read. Like, it, it will pass time. It will get you a little bit of the lore. Um, let's go back to the tabletop for a little bit. Yeah, I I, I got I want to throw a little bit. I, I mentioned that uh, the grandfather had, the, one of the godfathers of Warhammer died. For, it, was, it wasn't 40K. It was fantasy. Fantasy, okay. But his name was Brian Ansel. Okay. But he also, back in 1970... So, Warhammer goes back a little farther. Yeah, it goes way back. 40K, goes back. Yeah. 40K starts in 87. But um, Warhammer... This is going to be interesting. I don't know if you knew this. But Warhammer founded Citadel Miniatures in partnership with Steve Jackson Games back in... Wow. 1978. So, Steve Jackson, that's a, that's a name a which lot is, of you gamers will know. Yeah, which, yeah he's got a pretty big... Because they, they did GURPS. They did... Munchkin. Munchkin. Yeah, like, I mean, uh, it's Ogre. Pretty, like they did a lot. I was surprised. I did. I just read this little tidbit, and I, that's where, yeah. But that's they, pretty cool. They started it. Uh, Nineteen eighty-three is when fantasy and came out. Games Workshop. This this is a little-known piece of information. I might be mistaken on this, but I remember reading it. Yep. Somewhere. Uh, remember the Fiend Folio? Yep. For first edition Dungeons and Dragons. Yep. That was made in England. Okay. That was There's a bunch of a bunch of English authors, right. British authors. United Kingdom authors, whatever it was at the time, yeah. um, made the Fiend Folio and pitched it to Gary Gygax, and he purchased it and printed it. Right. Those guys then took that money and made Warhammer. Oh, so the guys good. that made the original Fiend Folio were the guys that made Warhammer. Nice. Supposedly. I don't that, know if that's, that's true. Probably, there's probably a lot. There's probably some truth to it. A lot of these guys, they did work together. I mean, just the fact that Steve Jackson and his, the guy who Citadel Miniatures and the guy who helped 40k and fantasy start which is three different guys by the way they all got together and then the two guys bought out steve jackson and then later ansel left games workshop to buy war games foundry so yeah so there's a lot of intertwinedness and a lot of um overlapping but like the 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 great games that you've played for years odds are Someone from somewhere else had their fingers in that pie. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of that stuff is just yeah. so intertwined. Because back then, there weren't many nerds. No. Back, so, back then, most of this stuff was a little bit of taboo. Yeah. And you know, so... The 40K universe, if you read into it, you will realize why it was taboo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's some dark stuff going on there. Yeah. But, so, <laughs> let's, uh, let's let's talk about um, let's talk about the, the tabletop a little yep. bit. Um, as far as the war game goes, right? Let's what? Okay, so yeah, like what? What? What got you into it? So what got me into it? I believe I don't even remember. I, I'm gonna be honest. I don't remember what my okay. my intro was. I think I walked into your shop, and some other guys were talking about 40k. Probably back when we when I had the thrift store. Yeah, when I got the display. Yeah, and and you had the display, and yep. I saw these. I saw these. Um. Um. Dark Eldar oh. <laughs> on their crazy yeah. looking ships and the super sick edge highlighting. Like they, right. they're so edgy and gnarly. And I'm like, God, those guys look cool. Right. And I had no, I'd never done model planes, model cars, nothing. No, 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 nope, wow, never. I did not know that. And so my first modeling, um, was... hobbying experience was Games Workshop. Dang. Drew Kari, which is that's like funny. the worst thing, right, of all the GW stuff you could put together that's, because that's it's funny. It's fiddly. It snaps. It pokes you and gets under your fingernails yeah. and stabs you. Yeah. And... God forbid you drop a piece. Yeah, you drop it's a piece. Gone it's gone now and you step on it later. Explodes into a thousand pieces. Yep. But yeah, that was that was my introduction. Um, what, how about you? When did you first like hear or <laughs> uh, same same scenario except for 
I had some guys in the thrift store that were trying to talk me to sell some magic cards for them and this and that. And, yeah. Then this big guy comes in one day. So we know him, Big D. And uh, he mentions to me one day, he says, well, so when are you going to start, you know, selling this this brand? I'm like, why don't I sell that? Like, what? who even knows about that? Little did you know. Man, a lot of my friends know about it. So he, he's like, look into it. So then I did. And then I decided that I'd take some money that we were making and just buy a, buy their display, which is like two grand or something. It top 40 plus of paints and whatever. <laughs> and that got all kinds of nerds. That, that ultimately changed my whole business from being a thrift store because we're running a thrift store is totally another issue but running a thrift store by yourself is way harder than running this pet store by yourself yeah there's so much more to it yeah where if i buy retail stuff i can just put it on a shelf and it sells itself yeah warhammer sells itself yeah like you people you, come guys, and they know what they're gonna they buy. know what they're looking for every warhammer guy never has come in and going well what's this no 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 they just they, they know, know what they're what, looking yeah. for they're like do you have any of this model any of that model that i mean that's the questions i ask so that's kind of what got me into it. And then I did some painting for a guy. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. And then I played, and that was even cooler. And I just, yeah. <laughs> well, I think the first the first sales rep I had for GW at the time was a, he was a rock star. Yeah. And his, his name was, uh, I think it was Anthony, actually. And that was my second guy's name, too. So I think I had two Anthonys. It was really weird. But he was like, he gave me the Citadel... The 40k or not the fantasy some table, which I mean you could use it for 40k too. Oh yeah, the, the Citadel plastic play mat. Yeah, the, the big huge, the, huge mass. Yeah, he just he sent that to me for free. He sent me two both starter sets for the fantasy and no, he sent me three starter kits for free. It was the Hobbit. The Hobbit, the fantasy, and the 40k yep. starter set. You had the Isle of Blood for yep. the fantasy. You had the Goblin King for the Hobbit. Yep. And then I had and the forty k at the time was Dark Angels versus Orcs, I think. No, Chaos. Chaos. Yeah, Dark, Dark Angels, Angels versus Chaos. Chaos. Yep. Yeah. And I got to assemble. I love. I've always been a modeler. Yeah. Even when I was just a little kid, my cousin had this. Got this huge box of models from somebody, some old guy. And none of them, none of them were full models of anything. So you were kit bashing from day. Yeah, one. and they were like, "Here, just." He's like, "Here, just have fun." Knock yourself out. And so I did. I, I had just been in love with modeling ever since. Yeah. And then, yeah, so then this stuff, I, I've i put a lot of models together. And there's very few companies. There's only maybe one other company I can even come close to saying has models of this quality. Yeah. And the 40K models are, are – any of the Warhammer models. And the fantasies are great. They're too. just – you know, any plastic model they make, and I don't want to go the resin models or their pewter ones. Yeah, so we're not, we're not going to talk about that. That's but their plastic models that you come and you have to assemble are so good. Everything from their cheapest to their most expensive. Yep. Not that I bought their most expensive, but I've had some expensive ones come through. Are so good. It's such a pleasure to put together, even if they hurt. Yeah. It's like doing a racked army for Blood Bowl or yeah. the Sisters or the Orcs or... I mean, it's just all absolute joy. Yeah, and like, don't don't get me wrong. Like, we're not just fanboying about GW. Here. No, there there's a lot of problems with GW. And oh yeah, but, well, well we'll get to that. Yeah, for yeah, sure. and not just GW, but 40k in general. Yeah. Um, and it, I think it goes into fantasy and stuff. And there's kind of a long history with that. Especially you you you've experienced it first time. Yeah, yeah. It it almost yeah. I I lost a lot of money on it because of it. Yeah, and then me as a player, I've been dealing with it up until this day. Yeah. Yeah, and then pretty much my whole player base that I started off with, which was a considerable amount of people, I'd say probably upwards to 15 people initially. And that was just for one group of guys that played in mm -hmm. Warroad. Had no nothing to do with any rows of people at all. Or, well, the town we live in, whatever. Uh, but the town we're in had nothing to do. Like, I had no players from this town at all mm -hmm. up until you guys started dabbling in it. But then the guy town down the way... I had a huge, pretty, I mean, 15 players are pretty big. And I met them all because they're all really excited. Someone was selling Warhammer figures. But you get into some of the problems, which I said we're going to get into. And that just hurts everything. They yeah. made some bad decisions over the years. And they've made some great decisions, but they've, I think, I think they made some terrible decisions. I mean, if they, if they made bad enough decisions, like here, here it is at the end of the day, right? Like, if they made bad enough decisions, 
they'd be out of business. Yeah. And they're not. No, they've come close a few times. They've though. come close. I bet you they've come close. They've I don't know how many times they've. I know that they've had some issues and. Oof. Yeah. So let's 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 talk about the tabletop again a little bit more. Yep. Uh, let's talk about the current edition. Yep. Because I've been playing quite Which a bit. Just a standard. Yeah. I mean, you gotta go with current edition and how and, it works. I mean, and, we can talk about the bad stuff all we want, but. So the current edition is tenth edition. Mm-hmm. And tenth edition did something. That they've kind of been working towards with like Age of Sigmar and some other stuff they've been doing. It's simplified. I would, it's yeah, it's simplified and streamlined the rules. Right. So it's not as complex and difficult. Um, they they did fix one of the biggest issues I had with 40k, and that was building an army. Yeah. Building an army almost took a PhD before. It's kind of like it's kind of like for the for the rest of the tabletop world or the RPG world. Going from set first edition, second edition D and D to fifth ed. Yeah, they simplified yeah. it considerably. They simplified it. You lose some things because yep. of that. Yeah, like I do miss blast templates. I right. miss. Yeah, yeah. There's no blast the, templates anymore. I miss just, scatter dice. I mean, right. You know, there's some things that I miss, but for the health of the game and for the health of the community and people getting into it, um, I think you're more likely to find someone who's never heard of or played 40k today. Right. And be able to teach them in one sitting, right? How, how to which, which you did literally with uh, Gamer John. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, you guys literally sat down and just taught him how to play. Like he understands the game enough that he got into another similar game. Yep. But, but yeah, that's that's the idea, right? Is like that it, it's, it's even Gamer Joe. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's it's made it easier for people to get <laughs> in and play and not feel like things are so complicated. It's still immensely difficult. Oh yeah, it's still it's still a. It's not the first game you'd want to buy to play, I would think. I think you. I mean, you can. There's the kill teams, which I hear are a super simple, easy way well, to get into it. And kill teams different now because it's a completely different rule set. Okay. It used to be like mini 40k, just right. like skirmish 40k, but now they actually have um, a rule set within 40k proper for playing smaller armies. Okay. Well, there you go. And it's it's really simple. You have less stratagems to worry about. <laughs> right. You have your army list is actually built for you, so you just pick these models and you play with them right nice um so like they, they've done some good things with 10th um 10th also speaking on a tournament level mm -hmm. um has probably been one of the most competitive scenes it's been because nobody's over i think the highest win rate right now is eldar eldari right. and they're at a 58 percent wow now the next second place is at 50 51 Right, and the lowest place is at like forty three. Oh, so it's so it's, it's balanced. Very balanced. I mean, even if you're playing the team that's the worst, you're still winning. Yeah, and a lot of the teams four out of ten times, which I'll, is, I mean, I'll take that. A lot of the <laughs> teams that are doing the worst don't have their codexes and rules updated yet. Right, they have the data sheets for everybody and like your your basic yeah. army rules, and then the faction that's doing the best hasn't really been like addressed either. Right, because I'm sure they're going to put up the codex soon. Right. That's the copium of 40k is you, you, you breathe in the copium and you say, oh, they're going to put up my codex soon. They're going to put up my codex soon. Which, I mean, if we're going to talk about things that are not cool, I that would be my biggest gripe. I, I, if I, as, a store, as a store owner, that's my yeah. biggest gripe. I can't keep, like, there's no point in me keeping 7th, 8th, and ninth edition copies of books. Yeah, some of them obsolete. haven't been updated for years. Literally obsolete when the new edition comes out. And the new edition comes out. And that, I mean, they're even partially, obviously, with 10th edition because some of the other rules do change the big overscope rules. Yeah. So let's, sure. let, let, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about the frustrating parts yeah. then. Um, I'll start with, like, a soft blow. <laughs> and that's what we just talked about. Right. The, the codexes and all that fun stuff. Right. And the rules. So a new edition comes out. You're pretty much stuck buying the new edition. Right. Yeah, you pretty much have it's, to. It's, if you get in the 40K every two to three years... You're going to be spending $60 on a new edition. Which, I mean, overall, it's not bad. But... It might be. <laughs> I, I will say, this is the soft. This is the softening part yeah. of the blow. Um, same thing with codexes, right? You're buying new ones all the time. Mm -hmm. But the softening part of the blow is, GW has now released... You have to buy a hard copy of the book, yep. which has always kind of been true. Right. Um, but they give you for free now, if you buy the hard copy access to the digital copy. Okay. It used to be you had to buy them separate. Oh, of course. Yeah. Buy them. And the yeah. core rules are free. Okay. Well, you do not nice. have to buy the core rules. Well, and because it... The $80 book with like yeah. 8,000 pages. To... And, and because the core rules are free now, 
um, they're also online. They can update and errata stuff, and f they call it fact, frequently asked questions. That's what it's called in right. the 40K circle. Um, they can fact things and uh, fix them quicker. Right. And with the advent of 10th edition, they actually re released new army rules and new data sheets for all the playable factions okay. in 10th edition for free. Nice. Well, that was nice of them. So you don't need to use that's your something, that's something that was never done before. Exactly. You don't need a, your ninth edition codex. It used to be like sisters, for example. If you wanted to play sisters in ninth edition <laughs> or eighth edition, whatever it was, mm -hmm. you're playing from a codex that's almost ten years old. Super obsolete. And so two two like not just things that we're complaining because of this. The reason the reason we're complaining, the primary reason, at least I would be complaining, and I am a little bit, is because None of this stuff is cheap. You go spend two thousand dollars on an army, right? And that's literally what you're expecting to pay. Is you're playing top tier army with the nicest models you can get. You can spend a few two two to five grand if you want all the different if models. You want everything. Right. And for them to make your whole army obsolete because they won't update a codex that's ten years old, like the sisters. Yeah. Like that is so frustrating. So I will say in the past, Not they're doing it in the past probably three, four years. Right, DW has done a a better job than they historically yeah, have right. of making sure that people aren't getting screwed as hard right. on the rules side of things. Right, the mini side of things, well, that's a different story. Yeah, yeah, I think I think the rules thing. I think that a lot of that changed with Sigmar. Well, and Sigmar was like their litmus test for right. that. And I thought that was kind of cool because I, I actually understood some of the rules when I read it. They read burned the a lot rules. of bridges when Sigmar came out and they didn't have any rules and right. everything was in flux. Well, then they got a new CEO and right. th things like if you look at the history of 40K um, from like 2012, maybe 2013 yep, to 2019, it. Well, I got to do it, yeah. was a dark period. Oh, it was terrible. It was, Awful. Not a good time for me to invest a lot of money into it. It was it was like the Homelands expansion yeah, of Magic. It I was 15 just players the, to zero. It was the worst <laughs> time to play. Worst time to buy anything. Worst time to do anything. And that's why I didn't play frequently for many many years. It was just too chaotic. It was too chaotic. I played other games. I did. Yeah. You know, I just didn't touch 40k. Right. And then 2020, yeah, but 2020, 2019, right after the pandemic, right. Um, things changed. It, it got better. Um. They started releasing more. Um, almost every army has a collector's box now. Right. Yeah. Some of them, absolute garbage. Some of them, you could build a whole army with just collector's yeah, box. Yeah, I've seen some of those. I have actually I had bought a few and sold um, a few over the years. And, you know, the Christmas sales are great. A secondhand market's thriving. Oh, yeah. Always find stuff on eBay or miniature swap, whatever you want to do. Right. Um, there's a way to get an army for less than probably four or $500. Right. And, and an army that you want to play. Yeah, it's still an investment. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but it's no different than buying a standard deck for Magic that's on a competitive <laughs> level. Like if you look at it compared to, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to or D and D. Yeah, think about how many books you got to buy. You need at least two players' handbooks. Yeah, at least you need a DMG. You need a monster manual, and then if you want to run a campaign, you're going to want a campaign book. Well, that's yeah. already two hundred fifty bucks. Right. Probably three hundred. Yeah. So it's it's a comparable thing. Um, I don't know. It's it's like the, ho playing these games and hobbies is expensive, and I think that's why more people play video games because you could spend sixty dollars once and then you can just play that. Right, game. right. Yeah, no, it, for sure. And I mean, it, the the good thing about Warhammer, I'm gonna say something really good about it is that it don't matter when you got your minis, you could turn around. For the most part, you can play most minis. Even you had some even smaller versions. Of yeah, other I have. I have some old Death Guard. They're still like, legal. They're still legal. They are still playable. Mm -hmm. They're cool still. Yeah. They're just a little smaller than the yeah, bigger ones today. Just, you know, yeah, the scale. And of, even uh, some of like I've seen some of the the thirty k Terminators. Goofy as Goofy gets, but you could take one of those. You could paint him, put him together, assemble him, strip him, repaint him, sell him on eBay. For the same you could any other new model. Exactly. Like, literally, there is no, like, it's not like buying a car. <laughs> and honestly. When you drive it off the lot, it's not worth anything anymore. You know, yeah. Warhammer's got a very good 
aftermarket. It, it, that's probably my favorite part of it. It's, it's, it's the only reason why I could play Magic right. in the formats that I did is because of a secondary market. Yeah, the secondary market. If, if the secondary days. market didn't exist, honestly, I think both of those games would die. Oh, yeah. Because of the simple fact, or they'd be less successful. Because of the simple fact that if you nuke the secondary market, yeah. you're, you're gonna there's going to be people that are willing to pay up front, and there's going to be people that want to play secondary. If you have more people buying from the secondary market and then you release a new tank or something, right. they might buy that from you. Yeah. Like it's 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 a it's a weird thing. Well for me, for me, the reason I like the secondary market is well, selling reasons. I can buy models from you yeah. that you don't want anymore. Or you could just do whatever, trade for them, whatever. I can turn on selling for money. Mm-hmm. Like in this but on the other hand, if I have a f I had a Dark Angels army and I wanted to dabble in Necrons or Orcs. I don't have to in the secondary market. I can go get those. I don't have to spend premium dollars. I mean, I still spent plenty of money, but not brand new prices on a used army. Yep. You know, or or trade because pe- people just love trading. And the other thing to do too is like, uh, if you want to get into 40k, the the starter sets. If you're interested in either of the armies in the starter set, find someone else interested go in the other it. half. Yep. Buy two boxes and yeah. then just swap the boxes with them. All of a sudden, you've got a lot of points. Yeah. For your army, at a fairly reasonable price. Yes. Yeah, they're well, they're literally made to play literally with each other. So. Yeah, and then like the other thing too is like if you want to get into it, just buy one box. Have your buddy play half a box, and you play yeah, half and a box. Yeah, I think the boxes are hundred bucks. Probably 130, 130, 140 now. Okay. Yeah. So that's not bad though. You just Seventy bucks, you got a playable start and you guys can sit down and play exactly not much different than frost haven and gloom haven so yeah exactly yeah. um and then even if like if you like the 40k universe but you're not interested in the tabletop per se like the 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 actual 40k game they have tons of other box set games that are a blast oh, blackstone yeah. fortress was a blast necromundo was a blast they had horus heresy horus heresy was fun they had uh, space hulk space hulk was great Gothic Armada was great. Yeah. There was two orc games. Like one was a racing game, but you got actual like orc buggies that you could use in your 40k. Oh, and not to mention Blood Bowl. And Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl is <laughs> phenomenal. I mean, that's actually the best way to get into this world. Yeah. But, yeah if, you, if you're interested in Warhammer, not just 40k, yeah, just Warhammer. Um, Blood Bowl is a fun game. It's dirt cheap. You spend like 40 bucks for an Yeah. Army. You, well, that you can just buy the box set. You get two armies or two teams already. Two teams, yeah. You get the fun of assembling, painting, because you can get all that stuff. And they're easy build models, which is nice. So it's great for first time. If you want to get your kid into playing, try Blood Bowl. Because yeah. like, they, I guarantee they'll look at the models and go, oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. and they're cool models. They're, they're just... Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to get off track there. No, we're good. Um, and then as far as like the rest of 40K, there's tons of video games out there. So if you want to just dabble in it, I know lots of people who really like 40K... Who just play video games? Who just play the 40k video games? I know. There's a, actually a few people that have come into the store. I didn't realize there was a tabletop version. Yep. Like I know Space Marine. Tons of people. Oh yeah. Space that Marine. Was that. Uh, a game. Bolt Gun came out recently, yep. and that's like a Doom style where yep. you play as an Ultramarine. Yeah. They had the RTSs, the Dawn of War series, which was really uh, awesome. Gladius is pretty good. That's like a Civ style like game. Total War, of course. Total War for Fantasy. Yep. And <laughs> I think everybody who doesn't live under a rock has heard of. Yeah. If you played anything to do with RTSs and then you've heard of Total War, or heard of Total War, yeah, and that's how I got a lot of my buddies who had nothing to do with you know Warhammer, not just 40k, but fantasy. Do a Total War 40k. There's been so many people asking for it, but it'd be so weird. But that's okay because it's weird anyway. It's just ranged weapons in Total War is just a weird thing. Yeah, that's true. All right, but um. Yeah, I mean, there's tons. Of, they're pretty free with their IP as far as like letting people make games, right? So there is kind of a lot of crap to wade through. Yeah, just read the reviews. Garbage. Yeah, stick to the reviews. Some of the reviews, not so great, but I still played the game and I had a lot of fun. <laughs> Inquisitor Martyr is a great example. The reviews aren't super great on that game. It's maybe seventy percent, right? Seventy-five, maybe. No, I, I mean that's. But I enjoyed the heck out of that game. That's not I terrible. I, it's. Pretty much the only action RPG I've ever played that I really like. Yeah, I, I got involved in 6th edition. That's my first set I bought. 20, 2012. Okay, so that would, that would 2014, started, they yeah. released 7th. 2017, they released 8th. Yeah. And then 2020, they released 9th. 
and now 2023, 2023 they released yeah, this year's 10. So yeah, it's like every two and a half to three year, years. Yeah. Um, Warhammer's kind of a subscription service in a way. Yeah, there's the art paying. Yeah, but it, it, it honestly, it's sixty dollars for the and the rules are free now, so you don't have to worry about it. So all you really got to worry about is buying your codex. Well, I could always go back to the the, the, the thing that I've eaten, which you said one time that made sense to me, and it, I've kind of used it in a lot of different, especially in the hobby industry. Look at the cost versus time. Yeah. Right. And you said to me one time that if a game gives you a dollar an hour, you paid fifty bucks for a game, you get fifty hours out of it. It was well worth the game. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. Okay. And I think the kind of same thing goes with Warhammer or D and D or any of that. You spend say two thousand dollars, right? Which is a lot of money. But how many hours did you spend painting and assembling and, and playing? Playing. And not only that, but this is two thousand hours. And it's not. You're not going to get your investment back in probably a year or two. Oh no. But if you're gonna if you're gonna drop that kind of money on an army, you're kind of expecting to play for a few years. Right. Well, that too. Look, I, I, the other I thing have is, models is that I have in have, Africa in 2012. You can like resell. You can resell. And you can resell. Exactly. So I mean, you, sure. To maybe you won't get two thousand dollars. Maybe you're an average painter, so you only get fifteen hundred. Okay. So did you get five hundred dollars worth of entertainment out of it? Yeah, and if, if you don't care what you play and you want to get into 40k, yeah. tons of YouTube videos out there explaining how to basically put an army together for the least amount of money. Yeah. Otherwise, what I recommend to people is find someone who plays. Mm -hmm. Odds are they have two armies. Yeah, Chances are very good they have two, probably three or four. Yeah, and then most people collect everything. Play with that, can. or I could probably get murdered by GW for saying this, but I'm going to say it anyways. Yep. Uh, try it on Tabletop Simulator. There's tons of yeah. tons of packs out there. I don't know why they'd be upset. I don't understand. I never understood why they get upset about that stuff. Because I guarantee that if I play something like that and I'm excited about it, I just go buy the hard copy so I can play it for reals. Yeah. Like, I, there's only so much you can do with a Tabletop Simulator. It's Yeah, like, well, don't get me... I, I enjoy it. It's just like reading a book versus an audiobook. I like getting out... Yeah, well, yeah, no, I love reading books. I, I, I like, like reading more than time. I like listening. It's just... I, I just don't have as much. I drive more than I... Yeah, so I can just sit in my car and listen. And, and that's the idea behind the tabletop simulator too. Is like, oh, yeah. But if if you want to play and you want to get into it, I highly recommend that because that'll let you know if you like it or not. Yeah. And there's tons of good workshop packs out there. There is. There's a man. Yeah, yeah, there is. Um, it, it's just don't be afraid to dabble in 40k in budget ways if you have to. Yeah. Start because to. there there are budget ways to do it. And then if you like it, go nuts, man. Yeah. Or just go do like, do like. Goff and I did for years. Mm -hmm. Don't even play the game. You're just like doing the models. Heck yeah, modeling, painting. I mean, that's it's not even something we really touched on. We talked about assembling and painting, but we've done it in other episodes, though. Yeah, no, of course. But this one, 40k, the big part. I mean, my favorite part of 40k by far is the painting of the models. Painting models, yep. assembling, the assembling and painting. After that, I'll play. And that'd be fun. But I mean, if I had a 2,000 point army, that would take me probably a few months yeah. to assemble paint. If I wanted it nice. Yep. And that to me is just priceless. Yeah, Unfortunately, it, it takes away from everything else I'm doing. So, yeah. mm -hmm. and it, it's just a matter of like, I, I guess the takeaway from all this is 40K gets a lot of bad rap, deservedly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you'll also find just as many people who are fervently love it. Yeah. If they, they might hate gw and hate everything about the company they're, and they're still owning the models they're but still, they own the models and they're playing and they're, they're having playing fun. with their own home and, rules. and honestly people just like to bitch for bitching sake a lot of time yeah but boil everything down look at it you're gonna have fun if you play i guarantee it uh yeah and if you're on the edge you're just like well does it really give you enough do yourself a favor and if you want something that encompasses more than just a couple people at a table. Go watch. Go to go to YouTube. Type in Warhammer 40k Apocalypse Battle. Oh yeah. And just sit back and watch and look at the models because you literally can build life size models to fight yeah. in these things. There's rules for this. Yeah. I mean, not life size. Damn near size of a small are child. Humongous. Yeah, the Warlord Titans are pretty big. Oh uh, yeah, and even if you go to Wikipedia, which is where I'm at, and you're looking at the different types of video games and board games. Like Javen said, so many companies out there that are, or so many people get to, like they're not so tight with their license that if you if you pay them to use their IP, right. pretty much anybody can use it. Right. Yeah. And they're, 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 yeah. Like they're not stingy with their IP; they're just protective of their IP. 
Let's see here. On December 13th, oh, there was a movie. Ultramarines, a Warhammer movie, was released directly to DVD. I did not know that. Wait, they still released stuff to DVD? They, no, this is 2010. Oh. But I didn't even know they released a movie, actually. Yeah, like, wow. And if you just like the lore and the stuff like that. Just... It, was, it was written by Dan Abbott. Abnett. Abnett, yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's good, man. It's the guy, so maybe you'll have to find that um, movie. And... But yeah, if you like the lore and you're not interested in the tabletop, check out the video games, check out the Black Library, yeah. check out YouTube. There's so many guys that just are very good lore explainers on YouTube. Yeah, we've done videos on, or done videos, we've done podcasts on uh, generic tabletop RPGs where we've talked about other companies that do different things similar to this. But this is kind of the granddad of them all, so... It's yep. well worth the effort to put into it just to do the research and decide. Even if you don't decide, you don't want to do it. Yeah, and it's going to sound cheesy, but Jude, like Games Workshop 40k, really isn't a hobby. It's kind of a lifestyle. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, no, it's, at it's, the yeah. end of the day, because there's so much to to learn yeah. and enjoy that it's it's a lifetime hobby. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. So, anyways, that, right. that's enough. Yeah. All right. Well, good enough. We'll catch you guys right. on the next one.